You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Who said that? Me, just now. Coming to you this morning from Plesley Pit. It's a gorgeous Sunday morning. I've left home a little bit late this morning. I fancied a lie in. I had a busy day yesterday. Went out on that old push iron. And I went out on my motorbike with my mate Jack. We went to Home Firth and had some chippy fish at Home Firth. And I must say, if you're ever out at Home Firth in West Yorkshire there, if you want to get down to that Ollagate chippy in Home Firth, because if you like your fish and chips, you will not be disappointed. Anyway, enough about that. First impressions. I've come here. Because the first time I come here, I was so impressed with the place, I decided to make it a regular, regular place to come and stop and talk to you lovely folk. So, oh credits, thanks to Paul Bryan, it was him that gave me the notion yesterday to talk about first impressions. So, cheers Paul. Oh and uh. Mrs. Martin, sorry if I go on a bit. Only a joke. Only a joke. If you don't communicate, you get nowhere in life, dear. Eh? First impressions. Now, I've spent many a year creating a very deliberate, grumpy persona. Based on, well, my last therapist said it was based on fear. I was afraid, I was scared of what people would think of me. So I built this persona, this go away or I'll eat your children type attitude to make people leave me alone. Eh? Didn't really do it consciously. It come about over years with the amputation and whatever, being a bit of a drunk and a bit of a druggie and whatnot. But I want now to consciously, I'm trying the last couple of months, this lockdown has helped, it's been a godsend you might say to help me try and create a better first impression. All the wild birds and that over there, look. Loads of them. Loads of them, eh? They don't care a monkey's about no first impression, do they? Eh? Now, my first impression of this day was it was gonna be glum. Then my missus looked out the window. It was all misty and foggy, couldn't even see the motorway. Now normally, we live quite close to the M1, not normally, we always live quite close to the M1, but normally we can see it, can't quite read the registration numbers, but I can certainly nearly always read the curtain sides of the trucks and whatnot as they go by. Couldn't even see the motorway this morning, so I thought, oh well there goes the day, a misty murky day, so much for listening to your radio, your TV and all them weather reports that said it's going to be a gorgeous day, barbecue Sunday. Look at this, how wrong was I, look at this. Hey. Hello mate. <laughs> hey. Gorgeous day. I say it's a bit late, it's, it's about 7 o'clock now I think. I was cycling for 29 point something minutes, so my reliable app told me this morning. 6.28 miles from home in an almost straight line, up a couple, up a couple of uh, fairly steep slopes, if you choose them, which I did, because I need to get the air in these lungs, don't I? I need to get going of a morning. Now, sorry Mrs. Martin, I've got to crack on and I can stop waffling. Story of first impressions. As I was cycling up here, I thought, I thought I've sold this story before, about how I met a club from Germany. And I'm not sure if I have or not, so I'm going to tell it, just in case. And if you've already heard it, hit the fast forward. Now, me and my club, several years ago, was on the Isle of Wight, as was our want, every Easter, or the week after Easter. We went down the Isle of Wight for a rally. We 
Good galley baggers, rally. And that was held by the white riders, or the right riders as we mockingly call them. Wonderful people, excellent little rally. You could even, if you chose to, rent out a chalet down there. I don't know if it used to be a holiday complex or an ex-military installation, something like that. I do not know. But they were there anyway for them that had a bit of coin and wanted to do that sort of thing. Went several, several years. I used to go with my first ever club when I lived in the South South. Breakouts MCC. Anyway, I was with the enemy bandits. And I wore a patch that said Ed Falsa. Which is basically the guy that enforces the rules. Well, with our club we only had one rule. Every member must endeavour to be pissed by 10pm. Easy rule to enforce, isn't it, really? And in other such general manners things, not bringing the club into disrepute. You know, not going round to other clubs and starting up fights and rubbish like that. And I was the man that had to go and be diplomatic with other people. Didn't have a lot of that to do, to be honest, because we were a jolly bunch of drunks. And people sort of, we were like magnets, people were drawn to us. It was kind of good. And the fact that me, the chairman and the treasurer only had 18 toes between us was always a bit of a talking point. Now, we're on the Isle of Wight. And uh, B, all right B, she had a hoodie on. And on this hoodie it said Speed Kings. It wasn't uh, a bike atop particularly. It was, uh, I believe it was bought out of a supermarket, if memory serves correctly. Anyway, it just said Speed Kings on it. And she was wearing it. We're on the Isle of Wight this one particular year, a club from Germany, MC Hard Rider, with their patches on their backs, as they tend to do on the continent. But over here, in England, you have to be proper 1% boys to be wearing your patch on the back a proper MC and you have to go through certain trials and tribulations shall we say to earn the right to keep and wear that patch but over on the continent they're more liberal about such things so when a club comes over to England with, these, with their patches on their back and they call themselves an MC it tends to get the English boys a little bit when MC's turned up who were they connected with? Anyway, a member of this club from Germany, with very little English between them, it must be said. They spoke all right English, but they didn't understand our nuances and our accents and our strange ways of saying things. So, in his sort of schoolboy English, communicates to our B that he would like that hood, he likes that hoodie. Speed King's very funny. I'm not going to mock the German accent. I can do it, but it just sounds like I'm taking a mick and I'm not going to do that. So he swaps. B says, oh, I like yours. It says MC Hard Rider on it. I like your top. We'll do a swap. Swap the tops. It was all completely above board and everything. That you, you know. So that was it. The guy thought that was all right. Obviously it must have been his first time away with his club. Because he did not realise that you don't give away your club insignia to nobody. And nobody who isn't in your club is allowed to wear club insignia. You can have support shirts, support hoodies, whatever you like. But you can't have club names. Because then people will think you're from that club. And various confusions may ensue. So their first impressions of each other was yeah, very good people. Swap shirts. He goes back to his club with Speed King's hoodie on. And I can only imagine the trouble he was in. Now all this happened, unbeknownst to me, I'm getting quietly Brahms with my mate up against the beer tent side waiting for the first band to come on of the evening. We'd done the general bit through the day, got some scran in us, and now we were getting quietly lubricated, ready for a long evening. When all of a sudden, about seven or eight of this club, elbows out, come marching in. You could see they meant, it was a purposeful stride, shall we say. And 
with this purposeful stride, I was thinking, ooh, somebody's in trouble. Yeah, me. They all come marching up to me. Oh my days, what have I done? Now, I've got a bit of German. It's kind of ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen. However, when I was a little bit, when over the eight, it was a bit difficult to be front and centre. And I'd done my best. And I didn't know what on earth we'd done, what one of our members had done, who it was. But if anybody was going to get a slap from our club, it was going to be me. So I had to brace myself just in case. And uh, they weren't making a lot of sense because they were a bit cross. And their schoolboy English had gone a little bit out the window and the words were back to front. And uh, cut a long story short, what they were trying to say was, can we swap the shirts back? But they didn't say it like that. It come across all aggressive. If you have ever communicated with a determined German, it comes across as aggressive. The first impression, you see, first impression was that they was going to fight me. Okay, they right. So I got a bit confused. I'm not good with confusion. So I thought, right, we'll we'll blow this confusion out of the water. And I said to their sergeant at arms, same as enforcer. Right, are we going to have to have a fight then, or what? We're going to fight. Put your fists up. Are we going to have to have a fight? <laughs> Bless him. Tone. Tone from MC Hard Rider. If you're watching, mwah, love you, boy. He said, no, 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 no. And then we went on to explain what had happened. That this, I can't say what he said, but he wasn't very encouraging about his own member. This, shall we say foolish? This foolish member had swapped a shirt that he weren't allowed to swap and given away club insignia. And if we were happy to swap back, we would all shake hands and be merry and bright. But you know what? We did. We did. Not only did we have a most excellent rest of the weekend with this German club, we completely freaked out all the locals, because obviously they thought there was going to be a big old to-do. And there wasn't. We became firm friends. First impression, see? And then within a few months, I'll get a letter in the post and it's an Einladung, an invite to their party in Germany in a town called Jemgen on the Dutch border, banks of the Ems River. If you ever get a chance to go out there, I heartily recommend it. You will never see a place called Willy's Love Up Bar anywhere else in the world. I genuinely do not kid you, that exists. And the man is called Willy, Willy, right? The beer that he pours, like a lot of places in on the continent, they get a knife and they scrape off the head off the top. Right? Really so much, it's a cultural experience, I heartily recommend it. Nothing to do with bikers. One weekend a year the club take it over and, and make it a, a rally site, but it's nice, quite nice, it's a harbour. There's a, that big right harbour where they keep posh yachts. Probably isn't, it's probably called something different. But yeah. I heartily recommend you get out there. And if you speak English, don't worry about it. A lot of them speak English quite well. You'll get by. And we've made a good impression out there because we used to go every year for a few years. We went to their to their party, to their rally, and it was uh, most excellent. So yeah, first impressions on the strength of. That first impression, we had many good years. I'm still in touch with Flick, all right mate, if you're watching. And Tone, I'm still in touch with the boys from Germany. We're sort of like family, if you like. I'm like their slightly mad English cousin. So yeah, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, you wonderful people, for listening. Let's, uh, before I go there, do a little standard shot of that lovely water. Isn't it gorgeous? The bird song there. Oh, I saw a hare! I must tell you this, I saw a hare just over that way there. About two minutes before I got off my bike this morning. And I thought, the hare is it a rabbit? I'm looking for the white bum. No white bum. Then I saw its big ears. And then it took to running. Now when they run, you know it's an hare, not a rabbit. <coughs> Now, some superstitious people would probably say that was a good thing. Bodes well for the day, my son. 
I don't know about that. I just know I get buzzed up by seeing different natural phenomena. And that was one of them. So that's me waffling. Sorry, Mrs. Martin. You have a good day, everyone. Tell somebody you love them. And I love you. See you later. Ta-da.